You know, we talked the other day about how uh, there is this Disney Plus show called Willow. And I never understood why they were making it, but I, I got caught up in, in some of the excitement when the last trailer or two came out. I thought, okay, this looks all right. And uh, I watched it and it's, uh, it's not very good. Not a good show. Uh, I wanted to like it. I, I, I actually desperately wanted to like it. And uh, yeah, just uh, just not very good. Not a good show. Where the uh, the uh, namesake of the show, Willow, is maybe the fourth most important character in the show. Huh. Maybe. Um, badly put together story. Disjointed editing. Just, it just a story that just didn't flow. Uh, it didn't work so well. For me. For me. But that doesn't mean it didn't work for some people. There are some people that have written to me and say, hey, you know what, John? I really like the Willow series. That's awesome. That's great. Now, word came out the other day that Lucasfilm and Disney had decided to cancel Willow after just one season, to which a lot of us, not everyone, but a lot of us said, mm, makes sense. But hold your horses, because apparently maybe the reports of Willow's demise have been greatly exaggerated because the showrunner and the writer of the show, Kasdan, came out and put up a very long public statement via his Twitter, basically saying, we have not canceled Willow. Uh, basically said that, we'll go over my screen for this, but it picks up really the meat of it. It says this, the truth is less splashy, but here it is. A decision was made last week to release our main cast for other series opportunities that, that, that may arise for them in the upcoming year. With all the TV and movies in production around the world, it feels unfair to limit an actor's availability without a clear sense of when you're going to need them again. It's further trivialized by simple reality that the scripts we've been working on require just as many actors from our first season with whom no such contracts or contractual hold exists. Nothing prevented Annabelle Davis, for example, from tacking on another show, but you better believe that Mims appears in, uh, in, every, single, uh, in, in every single volume two chapter. Now, basically, what he goes on to say here is this, is that the issue is that like many streaming shows he talks about, and he's not wrong about this part, with many streaming shows that are, it isn't like traditional TV, we're going to get a single, you're going to get a season every single year, right? We've just been talking about House of the Dragon is going to have probably two years in between breaks. I don't know right now when The Last of Us season two is going to come. So he basically said this, it was clear for us that we were not going to be able to shoot within the next 12 months. And it therefore was unfair for us to keep our actors under obligation. We released our actors so they can go and pursue other stuff and we'll get back around to them when we're ready to go. And he said, listen, we've got our blueprint for season two already. Now, he did not guarantee that season two was going to happen. All right. This was not its official Willow season two is happening situation. He's just saying that no such decision has been made. The decision was only made last week to release the actors from their contracts so they can pursue other stuff because that's only fair but according to him the plan is still to do willow 2 all right somebody wrote to me rob and said yeah do you hate this because i know you didn't like the show and i responded i said well why would i hate it let's say they do decide to do willow season two why would i hate that i mean all i have to do is not watch that's all i have to do if and there are people out there who quite like the show. So why would I want to, you know, uh, keep them from something that they enjoy? And who knows? Maybe the second season would, maybe they learned a bunch of lessons and maybe a second season would be a lot better. I'll tell you what, I hated the first Rush Hour movie. There, I said it. <laughs> hated it. I thought it sucked, but I loved Rush Hour 2. I hated the first Star Trek movie, Rob. I, I, I know you and I disagree on that, but that's fine. But I love Star Trek The Wrath of Khan. So, I mean, you can have a big improvement. Again, do I think they're actually going to make a Willow Season 2? I don't. I, I just don't think they will. But if they do, eh, it's no skin off my nose and maybe they'll make it better. I don't know. Rob, you heard about this. I know, like me, you were not a big fan of Willow Season 1. But no. what do you think about Kazan's comments here? Well, I think hope springs eternal. And I like <laughs> that he's putting a positive spin on it. Uh, for the actor's sake, if nothing else. I mean, look, despite the fact that we might not like something, a lot of people put a lot of love, sweat, time, and tears into making it. I yeah. mean, that anything gets made. Uh, 
I, I felt that that story, especially in this day and age, John, you know, when we're getting things like Last of Us, House of the Dragon. Now, I mean, I hated Star Trek Picard seasons one and two, and I love season three. There you go. You know, you right go. then and there. But, but you know, if you're going to make a fantasy show, there's so many on that are great. And I think that if you make a lackluster fantasy show, you only have yourself to blame. Mm. And um, look, I wanted this to be great. Maybe it'll take another 35 years to make season two. <laughs> I mean, who knows? But but I, I do think it's dead. I, well, mean, I hate to say it. I it, Because, look, in this day and age, they get real-time analytics on who's watching these shows. So they know exactly which shows are working and which shows aren't. And, you know, look at social. This doesn't exactly have a big social media presence. No, it's true. No, but, and, and listen, I think there's one other aspect that they're not mentioning here. And again, I have no, Bob Iger has not gone on the phone with me to tell me this is the case. Okay, this is just me looking at it and analyzing it and speculating, okay? But I think a big part of this is we all know the, the worst kept secret in Hollywood right now is that Kathleen Kennedy is on her way out, right? They'll probably make that official three, four months after Indiana Jones 5 uh, finishes its run. But Everybody knows there is a new, they're going to have a new head of Lucasfilm at some point here. And they're probably not going to make a decision about putting that show back on the air and then handcuffing that to a new Lucasfilm president who's probably going to come in. So I would venture to guess, you know, I believe him. I believe him when he says a decision hasn't really been made yet about it, that the plan is still to do it. I believe him. But I, I also believe that what they're not talking about is a new head of Lucasfilm when they come in is going to be the one to make that decision. And I think the likelihood of that new head of Lucasfilm deciding to give it a green light for a second season is probably pretty low. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. Hope springs eternal, John. Hope springs eternal. <laughs> All right, guys. Question is for you. What do you think about this? Apparently, Willow is not actually as dead as it's been reported. The reports of its demise have been greatly exaggerated. So I, I don't know. Do you think it'll come back? Maybe you were one of the people that enjoyed the show. Uh, maybe you weren't. Whatever you guys think about this, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey, guys. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Breaking news, Manscaped now sells beard products. That's right, they are once again revolutionizing men's grooming with the brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Now you can finally use Manscaped products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com and using the code Campia for 20% off and free shipping. It all starts with the Beard Hedger. This thing is a juggernaut of fixing faces. First off, this cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths, all with one guard. So no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons. You also get the beard shampoo and conditioner. Because guys, you gotta remember that all of your hair is different. Your beard hair is more coarse and easier to damage than the hair on your head. Next, the kit has Manscaped's beard oil. The oil relieves dryness both on the beard and the skin beneath. You then cap it off with the beard balm that shapes, styles, moisturizes, and tames for a sculpted look. The Pro Beard Kit also comes with three special gifts. A beard brush, comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress. With a nice beard, your face is perfectly groomed, right? Wrong. You need to keep an eye out for those tough-to-trim ear and nose hairs. The brand new Weed Whacker 2.0 offers improved blades and skin-safe technology with a no-tugging guarantee. It's never been so painless to mind your manholes. And now that you have your face looking great, you must try Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0 for the full-body grooming experience. And good news, the Performance Package 4.0 now comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 and all of the other below-the-waist grooming products that Manscaped is known for. Your significant other will be delighted to see you covering all bases, if you know what I mean. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code CAMPIA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code CAMPIA. Manscaped Beard Hedger, one stroke, one guard, 20 lengths.